I remember calling my parents and saying, this is what I had in mind to do, and they seemed to take it all well. And uh, the only thing my father said was, uh, what date are you leaving? I told him, and I got on with my packing. And basically, I just put all my possessions in storage, and I drove an MG Midget at the time. All I did was take it down to the car wash, and I then filled the whole small trunk of that little car with enough dog food for six weeks because I was taking my 70-pound golden retriever with me in the other seat. So the night before I was planning to leave, I got a call from my father, and he said, well, you might want to swing by the airport on your way out of town, he said, uh, and pick him up. Well, the rest is history, and he was there, and he got into the second seat. The dog had to go a little bit further back in the car, and thankfully, he brought a very well-stocked tool bag with him. He basically wore the same clothes for the next three weeks because the car broke down every single night as we drove across country to get to San Diego. He didn't ever complain. He was working under just the light of the street lamp in some different town, in some different state. And he got that little car all the way across the country. And we limped, limped into San Diego. But we had a sign on the car and it said, California or bust. <laughs> so we made it. We actually switched off driving every four hours with each other throughout the whole time. And we had a lot of time to talk. And I didn't find out until a little bit later on that he never told anybody that he was going to do this, except for my mother and his secretary. So he just kind of disappeared from work for a number of weeks. And he, we didn't have mobile phones, so he didn't call in. And apparently, it caused a lot of worry back home uh, at work, because people didn't know where he was. And the upper management was a little worried. So when he did show up finally back at work, they offered him a much better job, and they gave him a double salary. So he never breathed a word about where he was going because they thought he was out interviewing with other companies. <laughs> so I think that that was a great story. And my point with all of this is that he knew how to prioritize and how to show up on the day. And he's always done that for me. And I appreciate that very much. And it taught me a lot of lessons about how to live your life. And I think another big one along that line is that you have to figure out what you're good at. And once you know that, you can then do that for the rest of your life and be a very happy and self-satisfied person in your work. And he was that. So we all have busy and complicated lives, but I, I really want to thank you again for coming here today. And I hope that uh, you'll take turns coming up here and having a word or two about your experiences with my father. And I just want to say for those of you who might be interested, um, I am taking his book, his latest book that he finished just shortly before he passed, The Rebirth of Jeep, uh, which covers everything from the Jeep history to the C-15s to Wagoneer, Jeepsters, trucks, and the styling of the XJ. It's a very interesting story, and it's very uh, nicely told in a very personal manner. So I'm going to take that to print and hopefully have that before the end of this year. So I'll be able to let you know when that's available. So thank you very much. And I'd like to introduce my daughter, Katerina Richter-Lunn. She wanted to say a few words as well. So.
Thank you.